Thank you for joining us on To Your Health with Terrebonne General. I'm your host, Rhonda Alfred. Today, we're joined by Susan Matthews, Nurse Director of Outpatient Pavilion, and Wendy DeRocher, Nurse Director of the Surgery Department. These ladies are just two of the amazing team that provide a compassionate care to surgery patients. With their hard work, as well as their team members, Terrebonne General Health System was recently named one of America's best hospitals for outpatient experience by Women's Choice Award, Inc. We're excited to have Susan and Wendy here today to tell us more about the award and what it means for patients at Terrebonne General. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thanks Thank for you. having us. All right, well, let's get started with you telling us a little bit more about yourself. Susan, tell me about what you do at Terrebonne General. Well, I'm Susan Matthews, as you know. Uh, I'm the Nurse Director of Ambulatory Services and PACU. I've had this role for about coming up on 15 years, and I've been an employee of Terrebonne General for 31 years. Okay, very well seasoned professional. And Wendy, tell us more about what um, you my do. My name's Wendy DeRocher, and I have um, been at Terrebonne for 31 years, in this role for seven, and I am the Director of uh, Surgical Services. All right, good. Very experienced uh, employees here, directors leading our team. So let's get started with just talking a little bit about what the Outpatient Pavilion is. Susan, can you tell us more about what? The Outpatient Pavilion is? is where patients come to uh, receive pre- and post-operative care. Mm -hmm. We also take care of uh, endoscopy patients, radiology patients, cath lab patients, in addition to the surgical patients. Um, one of the main goals here is to make sure the patients know what to expect, both preoperatively and postoperatively. Um, we've seen our numbers grow, you know, throughout the years due to just advances in technology and pain management. We've seen, pa not patients, I'm sorry, procedures and surgeries that normally may have stayed overnight mm -hmm. come back to us an outpatient to go home the same day. So it, it's really been a big transition through the years. Well, that's good. I know, you know, your one main goal is to make sure that they feel comfortable <clears throat> and at ease about what's going to happen Absolutely. and knowledgeable about that. Well, good. And then, Wendy, tell us about what is an outpatient surgery? Um, outpatient surgery basically is um, when a patient who has a procedure that's considered outpatient, they basically come in and they have their procedure and they leave that same day or within 24 hours of the procedure. Okay, so it's a pretty quick turnaround, right? So what are some common procedures that you all do in the outpatient surgery um, area? We do basic procedures like um, appendectomies, gallbladder removals, tonsillectomies, hernia repairs, uh, kidney stone removals, but we also do, um, we are able to do uh, total joint replacements, uh, minimally evasive spine procedures, also on an outpatient basis, um, as long as that patient meets the criteria for those procedures um, and we're able to do them as an outpatient. Okay, so you covered most of that pr surgery procedures and there's also some other procedures that we do in outpatient surgery or outpatient pavilion. You can tell us a little bit about this Well, we season. care for pre and post radiology, again, cath lab patients, endoscopy patients. So we get really a multitude of patients coming through. Yeah, I think you were telling me an interesting stat, Wendy, about how many percent of the procedures that um, you do. Yeah, so we do approximately, uh, give or take, 7,000 outpatient procedures annually. Um, which makes up about 70% of the procedures that we uh, do, do at the hospital. as an so That's a good bit. Good bit are seeing you guys, mm -hmm. huh? Some yeah. see and some don't, because yeah. they're under sedation at the yes, time, right? Yeah. Um, well, Wendy, tell us more about the benefits of having an outpatient surgery as opposed to an inpatient. Um, as Susan said, with the improved technology that we've had, we're able to do a lot more procedures minimally invasive. Um, which allows us to do these procedures on uh, as an outpatient. Um, so they per doing it this way, we, our patients are provided um, with less pain, mm -hmm. uh, quicker uh, recovery time. Um, doing outpatient, we are able to uh, get our patients home quicker so they can recover in their home comfortably with their loved ones and um, it's less expensive for them. So can you tell us what a typical day is like for a patient who comes to the outpatient pavilion? Absolutely, um, actually it begins before the day of surgery. We Ideally we get the patient in to pre-admit, 
where we interview them. Uh, one of our registered nurses will interview them. They're also seen by the anesthesia registered nurse. Mm -hmm and we draw their lab work, do EKG, and do chest X-ray if needed back there. All of that's actually done within outpatient pavilion, so the patient doesn't have to go around the hospital doing this. It's all contained in one area. The day of surgery, um, aside from the usual duties of getting the patient ready with the IV and the vital signs, one of the main goals here is to decrease patient anxiety. We wanna make sure that the patient understands what's going to happen both before surgery and, and when they go home. So any questions, we try to get them answered. Any resources they need, we start working on that. The anesthesiologist will come around and visit with each patient, go on to the OR, which is wonderful. They get to go over the plan of care with the patient and make sure the patient doesn't have any anesthesia questions. Mm -hmm. And then before they're actually brought into the OR, the CRNA and the operating room nurse for that patient come to the outpatient area, visit with the patient, and make sure they have no questions, and then they roll them on in. So the patient actually sees every entity before being brought to the back. So that's wonderful. Yes. When the patient comes back to us for, out, for discharge, they have to meet certain criteria. Um, so while that's happening, we are going over their discharge instructions and making sure that they have all the information and resources that they need for that. Once they're discharged, that relationship doesn't end. We still call the patients you know, a few days later mm -hmm. just to make sure they're doing okay and that they're progressing well and uh, that they have no questions and just to reinforce their discharge instructions. Excellent, excellent. And Wendy, coordinated care is crucial to positive patient outcomes. So can you expand a little bit more on how you guys work together to coordinate patient care? Yes. Um, even though Susan and I do manage separate departments, um, we really um, work together as one. So the perioperative services, um, as we spoke, um, it encompasses outpatient recovery room, surgery, anesthesia, and all these come together so that we can provide a safe, um, and give that patient quality patient care so that they can have the best outcomes. Wonderful, and communication is very, very important. So how do you keep family members informed during yes. a procedure? So we, we are, we're aware that the, the, the most of the burden um, of worry and um, questions come from the family member. And so um, we try our best to keep them as much as informed as we possibly can. And some of the ways we do that are through, um, we have a tracking board in our waiting area, um, and that board will let them know um, the patient progress through the um, surgery uh, and their perioperative experience. We also have available um, text messaging, uh, secure text messaging, um, and if the patient uh, family opts for it, um, where the patients will receive text messages to uh, alert them to the progress of the patient through their um, surgery. Um, and of course, we also communicate one-on-one -on -one with the family, nurse to nurse, nurse to uh, family member. Um, if, that, if that procedure happens to be lengthy or very complex, the nurse will call the family member on a, uh, uh, you know, a, continuously uh, to keep them informed so they decrease their anxiety. That's wonderful. Very good, constant communication. Yes. So let's talk about the Women's Choice Award okay. and how we got it. Great. Susan, tell us about what it is and how did well, Terrapin General win this? The Women's Choice Award uh, recognizes facilities um, based on outpatient experience. And we were recognized as one of America's best hospitals for outpatient experience. Um, they look at two factors when they're deciding this. They look at patient satisfaction and clinical excellence. So this award, or the Women's Choice Award, is actually a company, and mm -hmm. it's a referral source that is based on objective criteria by women. Mm -hmm. And it was formed years ago actually by the publisher of Working uh, Mother magazine. Actually, I had a subscription to this years ago. Oh, wow. And back in 2003, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And she had such a horrible 
experience with the whole healthcare um, experience, I guess, that she was determined to help women make smarter choices. Mm -hmm. And as you know, women, we have, many of us have very demanding lifestyles and we make most of the healthcare decisions in our families. So this, the goal of this company was to help women and men also make those choices and simplify the choices. Okay, by recognizing outstanding mm -hmm. facilities. So how does the organization go about achieving the award? Is First of all, you have to be accredited. Okay. So our accreditation comes through the Joint Commission. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, they also look at surveys. And again, the patient satisfaction and clinical excellence comes in. There's a lot of criteria that they look at objectively to make those decisions. And I'm proud to say that we are one of 294 recipients of this award and the only one in our region. Wendy, everyone would love satisfied patients. So tell us why that is so significant. Yes, um, we want our patients to have a, sad, um, a very pleasant experience when they um, visit our outpatient center. We want them to have the best outcomes and have a um, positive experience. And we also want them to choose Terrebonne in general as their provider of choice. All right, very good. And so what is the significance of this award to our community, Susan? Actually, I just think that everyone should be proud to see that this health system started off as a little bitty hospital and I've actually watched it transition. My mother used to work here, so I've been affiliated with it. It was a hospital, then a medical center, and now a health system. And to know that we have this wonderful health system here um, managed by homegrown uh, community members. Our right. board is all comprised of community members and leaders. And I just think it's a wonderful thing for the community to know that they can just come right here in their backyard for quality patient care. Thanks so much for being with us, Susan and Wendy, and informing our community about the wonderful things that are happening at Terrebonne General. Absolutely. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. It takes considerable commitment and determination to achieve an award of this nature, especially with the healthcare decision makers in the family, women. Terrebonne General is committed to providing exceptional health care with compassion and a wonderful outpatient surgical experience. To learn more about Terrebonne General Health System and the Women's Choice Award, please visit our website at tghealthsystem.com. I'm your host, Rhonda Alford. Thank you for tuning in on To Your Health, and I'll see you right back here next week.